Hello and welcome everyone. My name is Patrick Cassidy, Solutions Marketing Manager for Cisco Meraki. And it's my pleasure to introduce you to the first webinar of the March Meraki Magic webinar series. Every Wednesday in the month of March, you can look forward to a new live webinar covering multiple topics, including webhooks, monitoring at scale, and our session today, Meraki 101, Introduction to Meraki Integrations. A link to the entire series is included as an attachment to this webinar. So be sure to check out the entire schedule and register for your favorites. During this presentation, feel free to submit a question and answer polls as they appear. And speaking of today's session, it's my pleasure to introduce Meraki product, product manager, Lysandra Dewangan, as she discusses the Meraki platform, its integration points for developers and Meraki dashboard APIs. Thank you, Patrick. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Meraki March Magic Webinar. My name is Vasundra Diwangan. I'm the product manager for Meraki APIs. Today, I will be talking about the various types of Meraki APIs and introduce you to Meraki integration. From this session, you will walk away with having a solid understanding of what is Meraki platform, various types of APIs, and where to find all these documentation. So let's get this started. So today we will talk about Meraki APIs. What is this Meraki platform? And then we will dive into various type of Meraki APIs. For example, dashboard, location, captive portal, webhook alerts, and we sense. And then we will wrap it, wrap it up. So what is the Meraki platform? Cisco Meraki is the leader in cloud managed networks. Our cloud platform is always on, always learning, and always ready for what is next. So what is this Meraki platform that I'm talking about? Let's take a look. Cisco Meraki platform is a cloud managed infrastructure. It is a single pane of web-based dashboard to manage all Cisco Meraki devices centrally and securely from the cloud. So here you see the top uh, portion where there's a diagram. This is the web dashboard that I'm talking about. This dashboard comprises of many Cisco Meraki products. The first and the most popular is the Meraki Wireless. Meraki Wireless, the MR Meraki MR series, is the world's first enterprise grade line of cloud managed wireless LAN access point. The product line in the Meraki wireless are called MR APs or MR access points. The MR series offers variety of functionalities, but the main ones are the, that they offer enterprise level Wi-Fi, they offer location tracking and location analytics of Wi-Fi in that space. Next, we have the security and SD1 offering, also known as MR, uh, Meraki MX series. It offers everything on security to enterprises, which is designed for distributed deployments that require remote administration. It is ideal for network administrators who demand both ease of deployment and a state of the art feature set. We are talking next-gen firewall, content filtering, malware protection, and you name it. Next, we have the Meraki switches. The Cisco Meraki MS is the industry's first-line cloud-managed switch, combining the benefits of cloud-based centralized management with a powerful, re reliable access platform. With cloud management, Thousands of switchboards can be configured and monitored instant, instantly over the web. Let's talk about the system manager, also called SM. SM is Cisco Meraki's enterprise mobility management solution, which includes technologies covering mobile, uh, mobile content management, mobile identity management, mobile application management, mobile device management. This places systems manager in prime position to elevate the concerns of security teams in various industries, empowering teachers to run their digital classroom and ease the burden of enterprise IT teams with distributed sites. With systems manager, 
You can locate the devices, deploy software and applications, deliver content, enforce security policies, and monitor all of your devices through an intuitive web-based dashboard. You can run thousands of devices and computers right from one place. Last but not the least, which is the MV camera, the Cisco Meraki MV product family is a line of indoor and outdoor networked cameras that are exceptionally simple to deploy and configure due to their integration into the Meraki dashboard and their use of cloud augmented edge storage. The MV family eliminates traditional solutions, complex and costly hardware, removing the limitations typically placed on video surveillance deployments. So with that, let's move on to what, uh, with all of these combined together, it brings the cloud to enterprise networks. It is secure, it is fully HIPAA client, PCI compliant, scalable, adding thousands of devices and sites in a minute, and also reliable with 99.99% of uptime. And you can find all of these information and more information on the Meraki Cisco Trust page. So let's move on to Meraki APIs. Here I wanna ask you a question. The, the first question I have is why API? I want to give like one, two minutes for audience to give answer. What do you think? Why API? And what is this API? So let's start, like why APIs? APIs enable you to make better data-driven business decisions and then act on those decisions quickly and efficiently. To name few, it helps in reducing your cost, increasing efficiency, mitigating your risk, and overall it helps you to form a good data-driven business decisions based on the APIs. So now let's talk about the Meraki APIs and what we have in the store for you. The first one we have is the Dashboard API. The Meraki Dashboard API is an interface for software to interact directly with the Meraki Cloud Platform and Meraki Managed Devices. This is a RESTful API, which is programmatically managed and monitored using Meraki networks at scale. Second, we have the scanning API. Thanks to widely available smart devices equipped with Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, Cisco Meraki's wireless access points can detect and provide location analytics to report on user foot, foot traffic behavior. This can be especially useful in multi-site retail or enterprise deployments where admins or departments, which are beyond IT, wishes to learn more about trends and user engagement of their customers. Third is the splash page, or also known as the captive portal. This is also known as guest Wi-Fi. For example, the open Wi-Fi networks that are available in retail shops uh, when you visit a Nike store, you see like a Nike Wi-Fi available, which is an example of uh, Captive Portal API. So for customers, Captive Portals provide an easy way to sign into your network. They also help with marketing by providing information about your new products your, or services and displaying advertisements or promotional content to your customers before they are granted internet access. The fourth one in the list is the webhook alerts. So here, uh, instead of calling the Meraki API to look for critical network changes, why not have Meraki send alerts using webhooks? 
So when we dive into the webhooks section, I will explain what is webhooks and why webhooks, and I'll also ask you some questions. So be prepared for that. And the last one is the MV Sense, also known as the Meraki Smart Cameras. What if you could use the MV camera for more than just security? With APIs, the camera becomes a sensor, not just a tool for security. So with this, let's dive into the dashboard API. So why dashboard API? Meraki provides you with a Meraki dashboard platform but at the same time, we also offer the dashboard API for the businesses who wants to do more customization to suit their business needs. Let's see what you can do with the dashboard API. In the dashboard API, you are equipped with myriads of possibility. You can do the network automation by provisioning or setting up tens of thousands of network across various time zones in minutes. You can automatically configure devices based on environmental factors and custom criteria. Make configuration changes to more than 1,000 ports with minimum API calls. And you can do advanced monitoring to see the connection status of your Meraki devices. And on top of the network automation, you can also create data insights and analysis by creating reports. For example, if you want to create a visualization for a number of clients who are on Wi-Fi versus on wired connection, that you can do that. The dashboard API has evolved significantly, providing hundreds of endpoints to manage your Meraki networks. Currently, we are offering version one, where version one of the API, where the focus is more in simplicity and scale by providing delightful developer experience. In this new version, you have the upgraded and enhanced API documentation, Postman collection, Python library, improved navigation, and features. So more, for more information, please visit the developer.cisco.com uh, DevNet portal. So let's start uh, talking about the deploying thousands of sites in minutes. So before you begin, be sure to sign up for a dashboard account, which is a Meraki dashboard account, or log in to your existing account. Once you are signed in, deploying the Meraki devices is simple and easy. First, you need to claim the order number create a network on your dashboard. You can give any name that you want, scan the device serial number which you would like to add to the network and then cl claim those devices. Afterwards, you can update the devices and network settings. This is very easy once you have the dashboard and once you have ordered all of the Meraki de devices. Once you're done with creating a network and claiming the devices, you can go to the Meraki dashboard uh, organization section where you can enable the API access by going to the organization setting and enable API access, which, which is the first step. Afterwards, you can go to the My Profile section to generate an API key. Once you generate the API key, make sure to copy it and keep it safe with you because once it is created, it won't be shown to you. So for more information, visit this site, which is developer.cisco.com slash Meraki API getting started page. And I also want to add, like, if you have any questions, please add it. And in the end of the session, we will go over the questions and try to answer those. APIs which are available to provision new networks and claiming devices. So these are two APIs which are available. So the first API here, uh, it gives in the response like network name, type, and network ID. Then you can use the network ID uh, in the second API call and claim your devices. So these two APIs can be used while provisioning the new networks. These are some more APIs. 
So for making sure the network is secure, these are the APIs which can be used. For example, the content filtering to make sure only some contents are available for creating group policies, firewall setting, and a lot more. Once you've configured your network and devices, now you can start monitoring the devices. This can be done at the client level and at the network level, because you might want to have a lot of networks uh, within the organization. So there is a flexibility that you can do it at the client level and at the network level. And using this monitoring APIs, you can create some awesome dashboard to analyze the connected devices. And these are some of the APIs that can be used. With that, let's go to the location scanning API. So what is scanning API? Cisco Meraki's wireless access points can detect and provide location analytics to report on user food traffic behavior. By using this API, you can leverage the Meraki Wi-Fi products to immediately and accurately determine the location of customers and devices. Let's see what you can do with the location API by looking at a few examples. So in this example, on the left, you can see a few examples of the rich location data available in the Meraki dashboard. On the right, you can see a sample of the raw data made available through the scanning API for consumption by an application or integration. Location API can be used, uh, it uses client triangulation method via Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, and it gives you the location based on that. So some use cases which are useful, uh, which can be done through location scanning API are like wayfinding if you're in a store and you want to make sure that people can find a uh, few stuff inside your store, like Costco, it's a big uh, retail location. So for those customers who went to Costco and they want to know like where to find uh, certain items, they can use wayfinding. Then asset tracking, uh, you can also use it in the hybrid workplace, like there are people who work from home, but like at some point they want to come to office. So during that time, you can use this uh, hybrid in the hybrid workplace and also in health and safety compliance. So location API, currently we offer scanning API with version three, which offers upgraded formatting of the API, which is more user-friendly and derived from extensive feedback received from partners and developers. This version, like I said, uses a triangulation approach for computing location of the client devices. The scanning API delivers data in real time from the Meraki cloud and can be used to detect Wi-Fi associated and non-associated and Bluetooth low energy, which is also called BLE devices in real time. The elements are exported via an HTTP post of JSON data to a specified destination server. The raw data is aggregated from all access points within a network on the Meraki cloud and sent directly from the cloud to an organization's data warehouse or business intelligence center. Like you see in this diagram below, uh, it you can create some awesome dashboard analytics based on the uh, behavior of your customers. The JSON post occurs frequently, typically batched every minute for each API. So have a lot of information every minute. How to enable the scanning API? First, you need to log on to the Meraki dashboard, then navigate to the network wide general. Uh, network wide and then general, and you will land on this above page, the one in the, uh, in the slide. Turn on the API by selecting location API enabled in the drop down box. Specify a post URL and the authentication secret. The secret is used by your HTTP server to validate, validate that the JSON posts are coming from the Meraki, cl uh, Meraki cloud. Specify which location API version your HTTP server is prepared to receive and process. Once done, configure and host your HTTP server to receive JSON objects. Upon, 
upon the first connection the meraki crowd will perform a single http get the server must return the organization specific validator string which is also called validator key as a response which will verify the organization's identity as a cisco meraki customer the meraki cloud will then begin performing json post so this is how you can set up enable scanning api In this slide, you see uh, there is metadata for Wi-Fi, which illustrates the general structure of an API Wi-Fi payload. This provides all the information of the device location, MAC address, latitude, longitude, and much more. If, for example, there are no recent location for your devices, then it will provide you the last recorded location. So for example, like, you know, uh, uh, if you have an iPhone and then you have an uh, airport and like you lost your airport, which happened to me just like a month ago, I lost my airport, but I wanted to see uh, the location of my airport using the iPhone. So I did that, but my airport was uh, discharged. So it showed me the last place uh, where uh, the last recorded location of the airport. So that those things is possible when you are using this uh, AP. Location scanning API not only supports the Wi-Fi, but also the Bluetooth devices. For example, smartwatches, battery-based beacons, Apple eye beacons, fitness monitors, and remote sensors. The remote sensors. So Meraki access points comes with an integrated Bluetooth low energy radio, which can detect and locate nearby Bluetooth low energy devices. This data is then provided through API to third party application. These detected devices can also be displayed in the dashboard where you can go from wireless to monitor to Bluetooth clients page in the Meraki dashboard. So the list of BLE clients can be viewed for several different observation time periods, like you know, in two hours, in one day, in one week, and displays several useful pieces of information, such as the AP that observed the device, when was it available, the manufacture of the device. The dashboard allows tagging the Bluetooth devices to identify individual or group of devices. You can do that with the dashboard. Similar to Wi-Fi location scanning API metadata, Bluetooth metadata too provides the MAC address, location of the device using latitude and longitude, and some other information to get the accurate information of the BIE devices, like you saw in the last slide, the client page, where you can see information of all your BLE devices. So with that, let's move on to external captive portal. So what is XCAP or what is the captive portal? Cisco Meraki provides cloud managed Wi-Fi with the ability to host your own splash page, also called captive portal, which is a captive portal service for authenticating users to join the network. This concept is called XCAP famously known as XCAP or external captive portal. Let's take an airport example. When you go to the airport, you, for example, you are traveling from US to somewhere else and you are in, you are in a foreign land where you don't have any mobile internet with your career, or maybe you don't want to spend that extra money and you wish there must be an open Wi-Fi that you can join to. So here comes a captive portal. In this slide on the left, you can see a built-in guest Wi-Fi splash page designed and hosted via the Meraki dashboard. And on the right side, you can see a sample of custom-built guest Wi-Fi solution using the Captive Portal API. Some use cases that Captive Portal supports are deep Captive Portal customization and extensibility, like you see on the right side, like Redis and Blue is doing uh, the customization by using their own logo and brand. 
You can do a monetized guest Wi-Fi access at some places. If you want to use more than one R or two R of the Wi-Fi, you can monetize those. And also you can build a customer loyalty program, program where you can see like who are the customers who keep coming. This is another example of a coffee shop where you can connect to a public Wi-Fi by providing your name and email address. Remember going to a Starbucks and then you want to work there. Uh, so you have to provide your user ID and password and you will get connected to the Wi-Fi over there. So let's explain uh, the two types of uh, XCAP architecture. Meraki provides two splash page mo uh, modes, click through and sign on. Let's see what is happening here in the left side diagram. For example, let, let's take example and explain the left side one. You are at the airport and you would like to use the open Wi-Fi. Then you don't need to create user ID and password, but you can just provide your name and email address and acknowledge the Wi-Fi page to access the internet. This is called a click through. This method gives the benefit of simple, but branding, you, you will add terms of services, but this is less secure. On the right side, the architecture provides you more security with the ability for a guest user to create a user ID and password and the flexibility to log out as well. So like when you are at Starbucks, let's take the Starbucks example again. So at that, when you go to the Starbucks, you might need to provide your user ID and password. This is called the sign on method, which gives you uh, the following benefit. Advanced, it is advanced, it is authenticated, it needs accounting, and it is more secure in nature. So these are some more customization that are available for the captive portal, which can be used according to your business needs. For example, you can, you don't need to have even a click through uh, type of configuration. Like when you connect to the Wi-Fi, there's nothing, you just get connected or you need a click through or maybe sign on with SMS authentication. So anything that you want to do, you can configure that in the captive portal splash page. These are the these are some APIs that will help in enabling the captive portal APIs. Uh, I just want to make sure I explain what is the walled garden means over here in the captive portal API. The walled garden determines what network access the client has before authorization. This is critical for redirecting the clients to your web server and its dependencies. This is useful for holding clients captive until they see your splash page and authenticate through, uh, through it either with a click through button or with use the credentials. One very good example of this is when you are on a flight and you get open Wi-Fi and when you connect to the Wi-Fi, you have some uh, websites which you can uh, access for free some ex, uh, some uh, websites which will need uh, which will require a payment through you so this is how what you can do through world uh, world garden so let's get to the web hooks here i want to ask a question what is web hooks and I'm sure you will get that polling question and I want you to respond like, what do you think, what is, what is webhooks? I'll give 30 seconds or so for all of you. So what is webhooks? Webhooks are one of a few ways web applications can communicate with each other. It allows you to send near real-time data from one application to another. 
So why web hooks, you ask? You know, I will give you a very simple example. When you have a Wi-Fi and want to make sure that whenever it stops sending signal to the cloud or there is some failure to connect, it will send an alert to your receiving service for you to take necessary actions. So instead of you calling and checking every few minutes what is happening with your network, what is happening, what is happening, Webhook will push that data to you. So you don't need to exhaust all your API rate limit. Meraki webhooks are a powerful and lightweight way to subscribe to alerts sent from the Meraki cloud when something happens. They include an API style message in machine and human readable JSON and are sent to a unique URL where they can be processed, stored, or used to trigger powerful automation. In this diagram, there are different Meraki products which are connected to the cloud. When you configure webhooks, you can customize it to send alerts based on an event which is happening to your receiving service, which has happened to your receiving service. For example, when you have a Wi-Fi and want to make sure that whenever it stops sending signal to cloud or there is a failure to connect, it will send an alert to your receiving service. Your receiving service could be anything. It could be Slack, it could be WebEx team. Uh, you will see more examples in the next slide, but you can get those alerts to your receiving service and you can take necessary actions based on the alerts. <clears throat> so why Meraki uses webhooks, right? You might be wondering. Webhooks are a powerful tool for network monitoring and can be integrated with other reporting and automation systems to help your business react to and learn from outages and changes to your networks. This tool is helpful for service providers and other organizations who need round-the-clock monitoring of their networks. With webhooks, you can receive updates within minutes for your outages, network changes, new configurations, and many other events in your environment. Let's take the uh, top left use case. Currently, webhooks support all of these application integration. For example, the SolarWinds, Zendesk, Page Duty, ServiceNow, to name a few. Whenever there is an outage, your webhook will send alert to the desired application, and you will be alerted, and you can take necessary action. <clears throat> Let's take another example. You can automate your workflows based on network events. For example, switch port is disconnected and it will send a message to the WebEx team. So which is the second diagram over here with and also giving you the JSON response, how it will look like. And with the spreadsheet, which is the last one, you can also create a reporting of the outages and see when and how often it is happening. So you can do more of a prediction like, you know, on these date at this time, this can happen. So it's a very powerful uh, API. I will not go into a lot of detail about the webhook uh, because there's a whole session on the Meraki webhooks alert with Corey, and he will talk all about webhooks. So for today's session, I am going to touch a little bit on how you can configure your webhook alerts. So for this, Log on to your Meraki dashboard using your user ID and password and navigate to network wide on left panel and then alert section. Either you can use the already available templates or you can create totally new by first adding a new HTTP server or the host URL where you want to get the alerts. Then you can create name for that server and lastly, you can configure what types of alerts that you need. So this is all about webhooks. Now let's move on to the last topic of today, which is MV Sense. So I did touch upon MV earlier, but I want to ask you this question. What, what is MV? What does MV stand for? And I'll give you a few seconds 
before you answer that. And with all of these uh, discussions, my mouth is getting so dry, so I'll keep sipping water. <clears throat> so MV, MV is also known as Meraki Vision or the Meraki Smart Cameras. The Cisco Meraki MV product family is a line of indoor and outdoor network cameras that are exceptionally simple to deploy and configure due to their integration into the Meraki dashboard and their use of cloud augmented edge storage. <clears throat> what if you could use the MV cameras for more than just security? With APIs, the camera becomes a sensor, not just a tool for security. In the diagram here, you can either get local video access. So for example, the scene is being recorded. There are many MV cameras uh, on the left, as you move on the left side. And then you can see the local video access or through Meraki Cloud, you can access the video remotely utilizing the Meraki Cloud. So by enabling APIs, we can have smart cameras that can learn and provide more insights over time, better understand customer behavior patterns, and provide context or trigger actions in other systems. So it's a very powerful device. There are two different of, uh, types of API endpoints which are available in the MV Sense collection, uh, REST-based and MQTT-based. So what is REST-based one? REST-based protocols offer an on-demand between the client and the server. So a connection will be made only when data is requested. So similar to the REST API, like you are pulling the data. So REST API will enable you to gain historical or near real-time object detection data from your camera. MQTT-based protocol, protocols, which is another one, uses a published subscribe connection between the client and server. In this case of MV Sense, the server is continuously pushing messages to the MV smart cameras so the device can respond instantly. Using the MV Sense MQTT APIs will enable you to gain a real time feed of object detection and the location. Let's take an example what this MQTT is and then what the RS API is. So let, let's look at the first diagram, which is the top one. Uh, which explains the difference between the REST API and MQTT. Here are the first and second use cases, like how many were here at X time, how many are here at now. These two are doing the REST API, uh, pulling the data. But the third one, which is uh, subscribing to the real-time feed, this is the MQTT one. Let's take the MQTT example and how the, does that work. Um, here on the left side, you have an MV camera. This is the diagram on the uh, below one. So look at the bo uh, bottom one diagram. Here on the left side, you have MV camera. Then there is an MQTT broker, a notification service, which is a sample application, which is configured to provide notification to the WebEx team. So for example, in a retail shop, after the shop has been closed uh, and you want to make sure there are no people who are coming after the closing hours uh, to make sure there is nothing like any bad sort of things happening to your store, what you can do is you can set up those notification uh, in your camera. So whenever some movements happen, it will notify you, uh, it will create a notification and you can get the notification on your WebEx team or any uh, other third party application that you want to use. There are many other use cases for MV. So like 
For example, you want to see a person is detected in the vicinity of dangerous machine, uh, setting of a nearby warning alarm to alert the employee. So like, you know, you can set a uh, alarm when a person is in a dangerous setting where like, you know, he can get hurt, the person can get hurt or anything. You can do that. Uh, in the, this is, this can be also useful in many people where uh, they want to detect uh, in one location how many people are standing in a queue or like how much time they are spending. Uh, so, for example, you want to do it in a retail store, which I'm going to take example in the next video, but uh, you are in a retail store, uh, the line is so big and you want to make sure there are many people who can serve those customers, you can do that. Like for example, if the line gets bigger than five people in a queue, then it will get alerted and one more person to serve those customers will join. This can be also connected to the light readings into digital workplace for smart lighting integration. When a person walks in, the light turns on. When the person goes out, there are no people, then the light turns off on its own. <clears throat> this uh, is another example where you can see the count of the number of people in this store at a given point of time. The next example you have is uh, with the people count analytics. Uh, so here you can see who are the customers, uh, what time do they come to your store, and what days. So this will give you a good, a very pretty looking analytics uh, based on like, you know, around 12 p.m. you saw 189 customers. So based on that, you can do your resource alignment for your store. You can also configure various zones for your stores to count the number of people, like how much time it takes in the queue for the checkout versus in the reception versus some apparels. Like for example, you have offered, you have offered and got some new line of apparels and you want to make sure that customers are interested in those apparels. You can check, check that using the MV or the uh, Meraki smart cameras. Some APIs which are useful over here are, uh, like there are three main API types which are available in every sense, which are the first one, MV sense. This includes REST and MQTT API endpoints, which provide historical and real-time people and vehicle detection data and light readings. This live link API, this is a REST API which returns a dashboard link for a specified camera. If a timestamp is supplied, it links to that. Then there's a snapshot API, which is also a REST API, which generates a snapshot of the specified camera's field of view at a specific time and returns a link to that image. Like for second generation cameras, the image can either be in the configured resolution or full frame resolution, depending on your use case, like however you want it to be. So with that, uh, that's a wrap. I would ask all of you to give a visit to developer.cisco.com slash Meraki. And there are other uh, websites that you, that you will find the link. Um, now I will get the presentation uh, closed and open the floor for any questions. Thank you so much. All right, we can take a moment for questions. Okay, um, and with no questions, that concludes our first March Meraki Magic webinar. Huge thank you to Vasantra for this presentation and also to our audience for taking the time to be here.
While the live version of this webinar is ending, uh, this recording will remain available on demand. We'll be sending a replay of this webinar uh, and all the included attachments in the next few days along with the survey. The Meraki Magic webinar series will be back every Wednesday this month, so be sure to check the series page link in the attachments section to register for your favorite sessions. Also, if you're looking for the next steps uh, in your Meraki slash developer journey, just like Vasundra mentioned in the attachments section, um, it's filled with links to resources such as our Meraki Developer Hub, you know, which includes links to documentation, use cases, and examples to get developers started with integrations today. And with that, we've come to the end of the session. Thank you, everyone, for taking your time, uh, the time to be here today. We look forward to seeing you next week for another Meraki Magic Webinar. Awesome. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.